On August 1st, 2012, Oculus launched their groundbreaking Kickstarter project for the original Rift Development Kit 1 and changed the dialogue and the vision of future gaming. Ever since, the majority of my personal excitement around gaming and computers has been focused on VR. Even just six or so months ago, I'd say that the general excitement in the community was largely around Oculus and the Rift. But things started to change, and in January of this year, I posted a poll on Twitter, and that poll resulted in a 50-50 vote between the Rift and the HTC Vive, out of a grand total of 3,400-ish votes. While the new poll I posted yesterday is overwhelmingly in favor of the Vive, like 84% HTC Vive and 16% Oculus Rift, after about 5,100 hundred-ish votes. Let's explore why. Intel's Skull Canyon NUC features the 6th generation Core i7 processor and Thunderbolt 3. Learn more in the link in the video description down below. Now this isn't really a Vive versus Rift showdown, but I'm going to preface it with some comparative information to at least lay some groundwork. Naturally, the goal of VR devices is to give you an immersive experience, to make you feel like you're a part of the game or the movie or whatever it is that you happen to be viewing or interacting with. Currently, when comparing these two devices, it's quite possible to look at it as a simple input-output equation. The Rift doesn't require a lot of input. The device shows up, the setup is simple, and away you go. It's a solid and rewarding experience that I would expect the vast majority of people to enjoy. The Vive, when fully utilized, is a bit of a different story. The setup requires forethought in regards to where the lighthouse sensors will be positioned, if there is enough headroom in order to swing the controllers around, where the PC and your body will be positioned, how you will manage the tether, etc. It's also definitely not as comfortable or as lightweight. What you get in return, however, is beyond a solid experience. It's something to behold. To say that being able to walk around and move your hands and have that translate to your character walking around and moving their hands in a virtual world was, for me, kind of a life-changing experience, might not be the biggest exaggeration I've ever said. This is a sensation that I have been eagerly awaiting for quite some time now. But if you're a fan of this channel, you've probably heard this from me before, and I'm sure that you'd love to sit through me talking about how much I love VR for 10 minutes, but let's hold off on that for a bit, because I want to show you something better. One of my favorite things about VR is sharing my enthusiasm with others. Enter Dennis and Nick. What? Oh my god! <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Ah! Ah! No! No! So they were just playing a game called Raw Data from Servios. It's an alpha and definitely has some work to be done before it's a finished product, but it's a hell of a lot of fun and even allows for co-op gameplay. This seems like a pretty standard narrative for a lot of VR games right now. Even ones that are just more or less tech demos can be tons of fun and a huge of them are still in early access, although their prices don't necessarily reflect that. And they've been taking a lot of flack for that fact. I get it, it's frustrating buying a rather expensive game that doesn't turn out to be this extensive project masterpiece. And I completely agree that, especially for VR games, there should really be an option to try a demo. But these guys have developed games and experiences for a very small audience and need to recoup costs. So this is a time where I'll try to vote with my wallet and at least let them know that we do want VR games and it is worth developing them. 
Anyways, moving on. I'm not going to waste a ton of time going over the specific hardware specs of the screen and the sensors and whatnot. This video has my rundown between the Oculus Rift and HTC Vive consumer versions from before they were released, and only a couple things have changed. First, you're able to launch different games and control things through the headset because of the wonderful integration of Steam VR. You're even able to see your desktop and manage things easily. This being combined with being able to activate the pass-through camera in order to see your surroundings makes it so, as long as it doesn't make you instantaneously nauseated, that you don't have to take your headset off until you're done, which is great for keeping things like grease smudges off the lenses and maintaining immersion. Next up, you can use the dial on the side of the headset to control the IPD or interpupillary distance settings. And if you pop out the gray rings around the pivot points for the head straps, you can adjust the depth of the lenses as well. This can be especially helpful for people who wear glasses. And last is something that I was wrong about in my comparison video. They included spare face foam in the box in a slightly different size, just in case you have a more narrow face structure. I do hope that HTC makes replacements available for purchase, however, as these are sure to sop up face sweat after a number of <laughs> sessions playing something awesome like raw data. So that's it. The Vive is here and it's awesome. Should you buy one? Maybe not, actually. The 800 US dollars or 1,149 Canadian dollars that you would have to pay is quite the price. And that's on top of having a high-end enthusiast computer, enough room in both the X and Y axes in order to move around and support the majority of games that you're going to want to play on the Vive, the ability to properly place your lighthouse sensors somewhere logical, and the extra cash at the end of the day to essentially beta test most of the games that are out there that are just one or two steps beyond a tech demo. I am very happy with the experience that I'm having and I know a bunch of others that are as well. And I'm sure a ton of you are or would be, but the Vive isn't necessarily something that I could recommend happily to everyone. Our artistic neighbor wants one so that he can make these amazing creations in Tilt Brush. I've seen some of them, they're great. I recommended it to him, but that's because he's a baller. I just don't want people who are strapped for cash blowing the bank on this thing. Maybe wait till your local tech shop sets up a demo. It's a lot of money and takes a lot of dedication in terms of space and planning and everything. Just make sure that it's the right purchase for you first. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, I know you don't always watch the video ad part, but this is important. Silverstone, makers of, you know, quality cases, power supplies, guys that we've been working with forever, has finally decided to buy an ad spot on an LTT video. What could be important enough for them to do that? These cables. Now, we introduced these back at CES, but they are now available on Amazon. What could be interesting about a USB cable, you might ask? Well, they're really freaking cool. They've got reversible A-type connectors on the one side, reversible micro B connectors on the other side. It also comes in a lightning variety for the uh, Apple inclined among you. They're sleeved with nylon braiding. They're one meter long. The connectors are constructed with an aluminum housing. They feel really, really nice. And you will never screw up which way you are plugging in a cable again. So for all the phone manufacturers out there that are not supporting USB type C, you don't have to wait to have a reversible connection on your phone. They're affordable, they're available on Amazon, and it's at the link in the video description. Also, Silverstone's just a bunch of like really good guys. So if you were gonna buy a cable, then you should check out their cable. They're very nice people. All right, guys, thank you for watching. Like this video if you liked it. Dislike it if you were like, I hate VR and I hate you. Brr. If you want to see more of our content, get subscribed. If you want a cool t-shirt like this, this is new and stuff. It's like silver and there's gold ones. I don't know, take your pick. Check that out in the video description down below. If you want to support us by using our Amazon affiliate code, that's cool. If you want to go to the forum, become a member there or even a contributor there, that's cool as well. Check out this video, which I did reference earlier, but it's a good data point anyways, is the comparison between the Rift and the Vive pre-release. Please note that I made that video with the touch controllers in mind and they are not yet available for the Rift. That is a very important point.